Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure and the roles of the nucleus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes and the Golgi apparatus and protein synthesis. This is a big topic and it can look a bit tricky, but I think you'll get it. I've split it over two videos. So we're looking at four different organelles, and these are the nucleus, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, and the Golgi apparatus. We're going to consider these together because they all play a role in the same processes, which is protein synthesis and secretion. We're going to look at proteins in much more detail in a different video, but we do need a basic understanding at this point. Proteins are formed by joining amino acids together in a specific order. The order is determined by the DNA sequence of the gene for that protein, and proteins are synthesized by ribosomes. Now, I should point out that if we're being completely accurate, we should say polypeptide instead of protein. Don't worry too much about that. You can see what that means in my video on protein structure. Now, some proteins remain in the cell cytoplasm, for example, certain enzymes whereas other proteins are secreted from the cell, and good examples of secreted proteins are hormones and antibodies. The first key fact that you have to get is that the nucleus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes and Golgi apparatus are very closely linked. This diagram shows you how they're arranged in the cell. We've got the nucleus here, and the nucleus is tightly connected to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is here. This shows the Golgi apparatus, and here are free ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So in this video and the next one, we're going to see how these work together in protein synthesis and secretion. In this video, we're going to explore the roles of the nucleus and free ribosomes. So let's start with the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane, and scientists call this the nuclear envelope. This is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The nuclear envelope is studded with nuclear pores, and these allow substances to enter and leave the nucleus. The fluid inside the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm. And lastly, the nucleolus is a dark body within the nucleus, and we're going to see what that does later. In a human, the nucleus contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, and I'm showing you one here. Chromosomes consist of a strand of DNA, and scientists call this linear DNA, because it's not in a loop. The DNA is tightly wound around proteins and they're called histones. I should point out that individual chromosomes are not usually visible in the nucleus. A gene is a length of DNA on the chromosome, and I'm showing you a gene here. Remember that genes determine the order of amino acids in a specific protein or polypeptide. Coming up, we're going to look at how protein synthesis takes place. Okay, so how do the nucleus and the ribosomes work together to carry out protein synthesis? We're going to focus on proteins which remain in the cytoplasm, such as certain enzymes. First, the DNA sequence of the gene is copied into another molecule called messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. The messenger RNA now passes through a nuclear pore into the cytoplasm. Now a ribosome attaches to the mRNA. The ribosome now reads the mRNA sequence and attaches amino acids together in the correct order to form the protein. Finally, the protein is released into the cytoplasm where it folds and it can then carry out its role, for example as an enzyme. We're going to finish by taking a closer look at ribosomes. Ribosomes consist of a large subunit and a small subunit, and both of these consist of proteins. Both subunits also contain a molecule called ribosomal RNA. Ribosomes are produced in the nucleolus, and you should learn that. In the next video, we're going to look at the functions of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus.